there, Linda Goodall here. In this video, I'll show you how to recreate this stylized COVID-19 design without using any artwork. Normally we do start a design from artwork, but sometimes you just have a vision in your head. At the end of the video, I'll tell you where you can get a free, finished, and tested version of this design. In a new design window, we'll create a circle. So I'll just drag out a circle, press enter, and I do want it to be an outline. Press escape, select it, and I want it to be 30 millimeters. I'm going to duplicate this, control D, set this one to 39 millimeters. Now I'm just going to use these circles as guidelines for the moment. I do this a lot. I'll draw circles, I'll draw squares, I'll put lines, I'll put rulers, and these all help me as I'm digitizing, and they might get incorporated into design and they might just get deleted. So press B on the keyboard and I'll zoom in. I'm going to select the Digitize Open Shape tool and I'm just going to go up here to the 12 o'clock position, left click and left click, select it and change it to a satin and set the width to two millimeters. Now I want to put a circle on top of that, and these will be our little spiky things. Select the circle tool again, and this time I need to make it a little more oval shaped, and I want it to be filled, and I want it to be a satin. So I'm going to drag out this way, and then I'll drag out this way. And the idea is that once this sews, and these stitches will be going horizontally, that it'll pull in and it'll be round. So let's select those and go to a line and center them. And now I'll click weld, make them one piece. Double click it and we'll look at some underlay options. I'm going to change it to an edge run. Next step is to repeat it all around our circle. And to do that, We'll go to the Create Layouts Toolbox, choose Circle Layout, and I want 12. And I'll use my circle as a placement guide. Make sure they're all lined up on that circle and just left click and there they are. Go to the Objects tab, I'm going to select this outer circle, change it to orange, and I'm going to move it to the bottom. Now I can select all my green and I can branch it. Shortcut for branching is I, or you can find it in the Edit Objects Toolbox. And I'll need to tell it a start and a stop. If we go to the Objects tab, you can see we now have two objects. We have all our spiky things, and we have our orange circle. Now if you download and sew the one that I created, you'll see that I didn't use branching. I made the little object here, and then I just did a travel run over here. Branching does add a few more stitches, but it's quick and easy. Select the orange circle. I'm going to hold down the shift key, and I'm going to scale it so that it's just slightly larger than that inner circle. Then I'll change it to a fill, and it'll be a tatami. So the next step is to make all these circle things on the inside, and we'll do that with a motif. So let's select this, duplicate it, Control D, change it to a motif fill. Let's just change it to purple so we can see it. And on the single motifs tab, I'm going to select this circle. That kind of looks like we had before, but not quite, does it? So we need to do a few more steps here. I'm going to add an alternate motif. And I'll use the same one. And I want to change some sizes here. So I'm going to set the width to three on each of these, make it a little smaller. And down here under Layout, I'm going to set the spacing to 3.5 and the column spacing to 3.5. And I'm going to set the offset to 1.75. So we have the placement correct, but it looks like wallpaper. It's very flat and I want it to kind of globe around like it's 3D. And the easy way to do that is to go to the Effects tab, choose 3D Warp, and Globe Out. And you can see that it kind of shapes the design so that they look like they're flowing around a sphere instead of just laying on top of a flat circle. 
So I'll duplicate that again, Control D. And this time we'll change it to an outline, change it to a satin, and set it to 1.5. Well, let's change some colors. I'm going to set the first one to red, second one is orange, these two are also red. And we're making some progress. I'll zoom out a bit. Now we need to add our lettering. Click on the lettering toolbox, click on lettering, now just type in do your part, stay apart. And I'll pick a font. I used Woodstock. And I set it to 11. I'm going to adjust the spacing here. Let's see what happens if we do 0.4. That looks better. And now I want it to arc on the top and the bottom. We can use this tool. And I need to make a circle here. There we have that. Set this to black. Set this to black. Now notice we have two objects now. Even though we typed them as one, once we use that layouts tool, it splits them and it arcs the top as one object and it arcs the bottom line as a second object. And often when you arc text, your letters will get spaced out a bit. So with that one selected, let's do minus 0.8. And we'll select this one and do, how about zero? And if you have a couple letters that are a little bit more spaced out, we can zoom in on those. And with it selected, you can click on reshape or just press H and you can just click on those diamonds and move those closer together like that. And maybe we'll move that one closer and this one closer. So you just tweak that spacing any way you see fit. Now if you right click, right click on those letters, all of those are now blue and I can move those as a group. We'll zoom out. Let's go one to one. I'll press one on the keyboard. There's our finished design. So you want to save this as an EMB and you'll want to watch your design run in the stitch player to make sure everything's okay. So as you can see, Hatch has tools that make creating your own designs quick and easy. The trick is knowing which ones to use. You can download a finished and tested version from the link in the description below. Thanks for watching and please like, subscribe and do make a comment.